joined today in the studio with my wife, Renee Boston, and welcome to another edition of BTV, your consumer guide to injury issues and injury questions, either with medical malpractice cases or car accident cases in Maryland. How we actually pick our questions for this for this show is individuals will email us at info at bostonlawllc.com that's info at bostonlawllc.com or they'll visit us on our website uh, and they'll put a question to us through our contact us form and they'll send it off and it'll come to us we get a lot we answer a lot of these types of questions so if you submit one and we, if we don't shoot a video on it right away, just, you know, hold out. You know, we try to get to as many as we can. Um, but again, we answer the types of questions that you see in this show. We answer these types of questions all the time. Uh, today's topic is actually sepsis. Uh, and this issue comes up quite frequently uh, with a lot of cases, especially with medical malpractice cases. And today, Renee is actually going to talk to us specifically about the issue of sepsis. So Renee, I want to just get right into it for our viewers. What is sepsis? Well, sepsis is a pretty much a, a, a poisoning of the blood from, and you know, it's, it's a foreign body entering the bloodstream and quite frankly it's fecal matter or, or feces, your stool, entering into the bloodstream. So it's, it's pretty much a poisoning of the blood due to um, now their, your fecal matter is a foreign body because it's in a location of your body where it is not designed, biologically designed to go into. So a poisoning of the blood is what sepsis is. Now, how specifically, how does one get something like this? I mean, how does this well, it, show itself? Well, it, it usually shows itself um, nine times out of ten when someone is having some type of abdominal surgery from anything from actually from childbirth where there's a cesarean section performed or any kind of a tummy tuck anything that is related to the abdomen area um, any kind of surgery in that, that in that area what typically happens is because everything in that area is typically very compacted um, there's not a lot of room especially for doctors there's not a lot of room for mistake so um, what generally happens is while they're performing surgery in other areas, uh, a nick, a poke, a scratch, a, a scrape, something of that nature uh, perforates at some point or lacerates part of the, the bowel, either the colon, small intestines, or the large intestines, which creates um, pretty much leaking of the, 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 the bowel fluid into the, the, the abdominal cavity. Now, if this... Uh if this isn't treated right away, I mean, are we talking about some serious complications? I would take it that we are talking about Definitely. serious issues because you've got a poison uh, into the bloodstream or into the body, which could actually harm other organs and, and things of that nature. Definitely. If sepsis is left untreated, we all know the biggest issue that could happen, the main issue, is death. What happens is, um, generally what happens is after surgery, the doctor sews the person back up, the patient goes to recovery, and seems fine at first. But after a while, their health starts to deteriorate. And if it's not caught soon, I mean, really within a matter of hours, it could lead to, um, in advanced stages, organ failure, specifically kidney failures. Because if you recall, your kidneys are what filter your blood and, you know, keeps every, keep everything else going. So you, without blood, you don't live. So, and your kidneys are your filtering of your blood. Now, if you take, if, if your kidneys have started to fail, then your blood is not being properly filtered and it's therefore contaminating other organs and then you start having multi-system organ failure, which could ultimately lead to death. So the big issue with sepsis is it's got to be called ASAP. Now, um, what about in, uh, because we, we, you know, of course we handle these types of cases, but what about in a wrongful death type of situation? Um, you know, medical examiner's report of a family watching, and they've got these medical examiner's reports, and they're going through some stuff. Is this something that would show uh, with, with sepsis or anything like that? Would that show up in an in a ME report? Or? Well, it should. 
Now, if, because like I said, what would probably be on the death certificate may be multi-system organ failure or kidney failure or something like that. However, in the report itself, or it may be included in the, on the death certificate itself, some language that may, you know, the word sepsis may be on there. And people, then that's how we see it often. People, you know, what is sepsis? I've seen it, I've seen this word on here, and they say that sepsis caused the kidney failure, and we don't know what sepsis is, sepsis is. So-and-so was never diagnosed with sepsis, you know, how did they get this? Why did it kill them? That kind of thing. So it should be, and it may be like in a little writing, or it may not be where you think it would be. That's why it's important to get medical records in the event of a wrongful death, or in the event that you may suspect medical malpractice, get your medical records ASAP, because sometimes the language is hidden in plain sight. So without having that on there, you, you, you may not know, well, I'm sorry, without having the, the, um, the medical records right off hand, you may not know what actually caused it, but looking at the medical records, looking at the ME's report, looking at the death certificate, you may need, there may be a need for further investigation, and that way you can discover what's in that fine print, what actually was the cause that led up to the organ failure, which caused the death. If you're watching this video and you have questions regarding either a wrongful death or a possible medical malpractice case, reach out to us. Again, go to our website or shoot us an email at info at bostonlawllc.com. We answer questions like this all the time. Um, that's what we do. So, you know, you know, don't hesitate. Go ahead and contact us. If you do visit our website, you'll notice we do actually have a book that actually deals with uh, don't be left in the dark, what you need to know before bringing a medical malpractice uh, claim in Maryland. Very, very helpful. It'll get you going in the right direction. If you're a Maryland resident, this book is absolutely free to you. Um, go ahead and fill out the form that's on our website. As soon as we process the request, we'll get the book out to you um, free of charge. Again, I'm Attorney Marcus Boston. And I'm Renee Boston. And we'll see you next time on BTV.